Store Fixtures, one of the world's largest manufacturers of store fixtures, serves you with our 600,000 square foot plant in Goodwater, Alabama, and over 900,000 square feet in our two plants in Terrell, Texas. Added to these facilities are distribution service centers in Western, Central, and Northeastern United States, and one in Europe. Our almost 40 years of serving customers shows that even the highest quality and best designed store fixtures look and perform better when handled and installed properly. This video is to prepare you for receiving these fixtures and to show how to assemble the components. Always follow the written instructions and take the appropriate safety precautions when working with the fixtures. In some cases, the fixtures you receive may be taller and heavier than you have received before. Order sizes may require several truckloads of fixtures. With the proper equipment, the fixtures may be easily loaded and unloaded. It is best to have a fork truck available for unloading. Fork extensions for handling extra long pallets will prove helpful. Once the fixtures are out of the truck, they can be moved by using one or more pallet jacks. All pallets, boxes, or crates have a white label with valuable information, such as quantity, part number, and a brief description of the items. It may also indicate the sequence the part is used in the installation process. On each shipment, you will receive a packing slip with a part number, description, and quantity shipped. It is a good practice to store like items together for ease of locating. You will receive a white box labeled, Open Me First. It includes the installation instructions of the products you have ordered. These will cover the basic units, as well as accessory items that will not be discussed in this video. Now, let's take a look at the parts themselves. Basic Upright base shoe, center spanner, splicer spanner, which is used when the height is above 78 inches, lower spanner, top spanner, kick plate, please note that the notched corners are always installed up, lower and upper back panels, Upright caps, plastic or metal. Upright end covers, vinyl or metal. Base end covers. Base and upper shelves. Please remember, some of these parts may differ slightly depending on your particular order. There are a few common tools necessary for assembling the fixtures. Naturally, the first step is to find the proper location for the fixtures in the store. To ensure fixture alignment, snap chalk lines on the floor, allowing one and five eighths of an inch for kick plate recess. This is important because it will affect aisle spacing. We will assemble a gondola first. When space allows, lay out parts with kick plates and spanners end to end. Uprights should overlap so the bottom of each upright will stand at the break-in kick plates. Note the base shelf size is stamped on the base shoe. Insert base shoes into uprights. Shoes do not have to be locked in at this time. Lock in when raised. It is helpful to be sure leveling legs are about one quarter of an inch out. Raise first upright to vertical and push down sharply. Base shoes should lock in. If they do not lock in, step firmly on top of shoes to lock. Install the lower and center spanners. Raise second upright to vertical, lock base shoes, and install the center and lower spanners. Both spanner tabs must be showing below lances. Do not hammer. In the written instructions, there is a table indicating the recommended slot for the center spanner, depending on unit height. Be sure to hold uprights until the first back is installed. Install back panel by bowing the panel. Do not drop backs onto lower spanner.
Erect remaining uprights in run, installing lower and center spanners between uprights. On runs of six sections or more, stabilize by adding a back in the last section. Install all kick plates. Kick plates snap directly in from front. Remember, the one and a half inch notch at corners of kick plate should be at top when installed. Plumb end uprights using the level against the face of the upright and adjusting the base shoe levelers. Remember to start with levelers about a quarter of an inch out. Attach nylon line to end upright and attach line at corresponding slot on opposite end upright. Draw taut and secure. It is best to have the line at eye level when in the process of adjusting base shoe levelers. Examine all upright slots at nylon line to determine the highest upright in the run, excluding the end uprights. Raise or lower the end uprights until slots on the end and highest upright correspond relative to nylon line. Be sure both end uprights are still plumb. Plumb and level remaining uprights in succession. Be sure kick plates are on the chalk line. Adjust all upright levelers to one quarter inch clearance above floor. This is a very important part of the installation process. You can use the handle of the leveling wrench to check this. All center or upright levelers must be one quarter of an inch off the floor after the gondola is leveled and plumbed. As weight is put on the shelving sections, it tightens the connection between the shoes and the uprights. If the center leveler is left on the floor when the unit is loaded, it can create an unsteady condition because the center leveler creates a teeter-totter. This will cause a gondola to lean toward the heavily loaded side. Remove the nylon line and install all backs. Do not drop backs onto lower spanner. On section 78 inches or higher, install splicer spanners. These increase the load capacity of the backs when heavily pegged, and they also make installation of tall units faster and easier. Install upper backs. Install top spanners. Install the upright end covers and top caps. Install base end covers. Note that slots in the front flange of the base end covers allow the ears on the base shoes to lock on the cover. Install base shelves, making sure that they are secured in the upright and the ears of the base shoe. Visually check alignment of the base shelves, making sure the kick plates are up to the chalk line. Install upper shelves and accessories. Remember, it is very important that the runs are level and plumb. If the units are moved even slightly, be sure to re-level. Installation and assembly of wall runs are very similar, but with important differences. In this portion of the video, we will stress the points that are different. Always consult the written installation instructions, which are more specific. It is recommended that the wall units be anchored to the wall. However, this may not always be the case, depending on local codes or seismic requirements. As we all know, we will encounter a wide variety of wall construction in our stores. For this reason, the method of anchoring you will see is only to give you a general idea. As always, consult your written instructions or local codes for specifics. 
The shelving wall uprights will be secured to a simple run of 1x4 furring strips at approximately 8 inches below the top of the upright. Determine run length and location, then strike a chalk line on the wall to align the furring strips. Start with a 10 foot long 1x4, using 8 foot long pieces for the rest of the run. Most of the time, this ensures that the uprights will not be on a joint. You must determine the best way to secure the furring strips to the wall, depending on the wall construction. Remember, the furring strips and anchoring devices are obtained locally. They will not be shipped by Matix. Lay out parts with kick plates, lower and center spanners end to end. Uprights should overlap so the bottom of each upright will stand at the break in kick plates. Lay out one back for first section nearby. Insert base shoes into uprights. Shoes do not have to be locked in at this time. Raise first upright to vertical and push downward sharply. The base shoe should lock in. If it does not lock in, step firmly on top of the shoe to lock. Lay upright on floor. Drive WSRP pin through the upright and base shoes. Do this for the remaining uprights. Raise first and second upright to vertical and install center and lower spanners. Both spanner tabs must be showing below lances. Do not hammer. A table is in the instruction pages showing the recommended position or slot for the center spanner depending on the unit height. You may also want to snap in kick plates to save motion and help square the shoes. Remember, the one and a half inch notch at the corners of the kick plate should be at the top when properly installed. Hold upright and bow in the first back to stabilize run. Do not drop onto lower spanner. Erect remaining uprights in run and install center and lower spanners. Kick plates may also be snapped in. On runs of six sections or more, stabilize by adding a back in the last section. When only one back is used for wall units against an existing wall, the lower spanner tab opposite the back should be bent up. This is to prevent the spanner from rolling due to weight on only one side of it. Attach nylon line to one end upright and in the corresponding slot on opposite end upright. Start wall leveling with the leveling legs about a quarter inch out. Examine all upright slots at nylon line to determine highest upright and run, excluding the end uprights. Bring the end uprights up to level with the highest upright, then plumb all uprights using base shoe leveler and upright leveler. Install lower backs and splicer spanners. If not using mounting brackets, drill one quarter inch pilot hole and secure the upright to the furring strip with three inch by five sixteenths inch lag screw with washer. It may be necessary to shim behind the upright. If wall mounting plates are used, pull the upright forward and insert the plate. Drill 5 32nd inch pilot holes and secure with 3 quarter inch by number 12 sheet metal screws. Again, it may be necessary to shim behind the upright. Remove nylon line and install upper backs by bowing into place. Install top spanners and upright caps. Please note you may receive all plastic upright caps or a combination of metal and plastic.
The plastic caps serve an added purpose of locking in the top spanners. The metal caps serve as covers only and are best used on end uprights. Install upright end covers. Install base end covers. Install base shelves, making sure that they are secured in the upright and the ears of the base shoe. Install upper shelves and accessories. A large number of Matix customers choose to add our Hypermaxi or Outrigger system to their wall and gondola fixtures. The Hypermaxi system is more than just storage for inventory. It provides a wide range of merchandising flexibility. It can also add to the decor package to help create a total new shopping environment for your store. You have already seen how to assemble the basic wall and gondola units. Now we will show you how to attach the Hypermaxi uprights, beams, and decks to your gondolas or walls. The parts needed for the Hypermaxi system are Upright with welded arm Front beam Rear beam Note that the beam bracket is different. Deck support. Attachment clip and hardware. Wire deck. Particle board deck. Hold the upright at an angle and insert the arm bracket into the shelving upright. Pivot the Hypermaxi upright toward the base shelf. On gondola units, insert bolt through the fixture slotting and the Hypermaxi upright brackets and secure with washer and nut on the other side. This is not used on walls. Insert attachment clip into the Hypermaxi upright and rotate 90 degrees. Bolt attachment clip to base shelf. Run Hypermaxi upright levelers to the floor. Install rear beams. Note the bracket is different from front beams. Install front beams. Be sure to seat beams in the upright. Install deck supports by holding at an angle to the beam. Squeeze and insert into the beam. Swing the other end around to the opposite beam and insert. Then, rotate upwards into position. Repeat for remaining deck supports. Lay particle board decks over deck supports with notched corners to the front. If wire decks are being used, lay wire decks over deck supports. Wall units install the same, except for upright bolt as stated. This video is for general guidelines only. Always consult written installation instructions for more detailed information. Also, remember to comply with local code requirements. Call your Matic salesperson or customer service in Goodwater or Terrell for information about our other systems and products. And thank you for letting us serve you.